Hi, I'm Vivian the Knitter. And I'm Allison the Crocheter, and you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 38 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn, a knitting and crocheting podcast brought to you by me, Vivian, and my daughter, Allison. I'm recording in New Hampshire. And I'm coming at you from Scotland. Hello. Hi, everyone. I feel like it's been ages, even though it hasn't really been too long. No, it hasn't been very long. But our mini Thanksgiving episode was very mini, so <laughs> it kind of didn't count. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, you all settled back in in Edinburgh now? Yeah, You've pretty been much. For a couple weeks now. Yeah. But I'm ready for Christmas now. Went to the Christmas market, got my Christmas tree up. Oh, nice. So, yeah. We I'm actually haven't done that yet. <laughs> it's just very odd for us. Usually, Christmas tree goes right up right after Thanksgiving. The day after Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. But we had a house full of people. Mm-hmm. And then shortly after that, I got sick. So, mm-hmm. we haven't done it yet. Yeah. Well, anyways, thank you everyone for joining us, whether this is your first time listening or your 38th time listening. <laughs> uh, and a special thank you to a couple of people who said hi on our Ravelry group in the sort of welcome thread. Um, so special thanks and hello to Sarah, who is Sparkles261 on Ravelry, listening all the way from Australia. And Tiffany, who is Rocker Chic on Ravelry. So yeah. And I encourage anyone else who hasn't said hi before, who's just lurking, listening, to to uh, stop by our Ravelry group and say hi or comment on our YouTube videos or whatever so we can say hi back. Yeah, hello. Right, so we've got an appropriately, theme- appropriately themed Christmas BuzzFeed today. But we do, since it is December now. Yeah, and I think I think we're just going to do the one episode for December because, mm-hmm. you know, the end of the month will be busy with Christmassing. Yep, <laughs> Christmasing. <laughs> yes, holiday. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so the quiz is, are you naughty or nice based on your favorite Christmas treats? And then the, su- the subtitle is, we know. <laughs> <laughs> so straight off, I feel like potentially, I mean, it's 50-50 that we got the same thing. Uh-huh. So I got naughty. I got nice. Oh, did you really? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Oh, gosh. I mean, the description, it just says, well, it looks like you'll be getting cold this year. Don't worry, though. There's always next year. (laughs) Uh, The description for nice says, you minded your matters all year and you've earned your spot on the nice list. Enjoy all the presents you'll be getting this year. It's one of those ones where you can guess which ones are naughty and which ones are nice. Yeah. Like, anything that's alcoholic would be naughty. Uh-huh. So, I mean, we might just go through them. Okay. Uh, spiked eggnog many. or a mint mocha latte? Mint mocha latte. See, I almost went for that, but I went for the spiked eggnog because I, I actually, I like eggnog, and there's no other time of year that you can drink eggnog. <laughs> so, I went for the spiked eggnog. Okay. And Santa's cookies or chocolate lava cake cupcakes? I said chocolate lava cupcakes. Yeah, me too. I think that's a nice answer. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, peppermint bark or candy canes? I picked peppermint bark. So did I. That that one I can't tell which one's supposed to be nice and which one's supposed to be naughty. I don't know. Maybe the peppermint bark? Is naughty. Is naughty. Because candy canes are more traditionally Christmas. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. Fruitcake or gingerbread men? Gingerbread men. Yeah. Me too. I feel like that must seem naughty. Because you're eating people? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then spiked apple cider or sparkling cider. And I went for spiked apple cider. I went for spiked. Hmm. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a I way have, to like. Let's see. I have. One, two. Hmm. I don't know. Well, well, which one is naughty? Santa's cookies or chocolate lava cakes? I think chocolate. Uh, Santa's cookies is naughty because you shouldn't be eating Santa's cookies. Okay. And yeah, I think I think the naughty ones are spiked eggnog, Santa's cookies, peppermint bark, gingerbread men, and spiked apple cider. Of those, I did not choose Santa's of those, cookies. I did not pick which means spiked apple cider. Oh, and spiked eggnog. and spiked eggnog. Mm, maybe 
So you have more, more naughty than nice, and I have just a little bit of more of nice and naughty. <laughs> yeah. uh, whatever. Yeah, I don't <laughs> it's know. Buzzing. Anyway, <laughs> it was just a silly quiz. <laughs> right. So, on to the crafty content. Uh, I do Whoops. have a different whip than what we've been talking about the like the last <laughs> what two months. I started. Uh-huh. My crochet project. What? What? It's my slouchy, <laughs> slouchy hat is fair. by Luz Mendoza. And what do you think? Mm-hmm. It's cu- it's coming along. Yeah, it looks right. I think I made right. the, I probably made the, <laughs> I feel that I made the, the, the brim part Where? smaller because I like it tight. Did yours come out this wavy? Mm, mm-hmm. Like almost uh, ruffled. Uh, don't know. The, so so I made one a while back, but I used a uh, hayfield something. It's like all acrylic, and it's like really loosely plied. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't very. Didn't really hold a shape. Like I had to add extra elastic oh. string well, it's, to it's the very, ribbing. This is very stretchy. Actually, let it. But I mean, it, it looks all right. And so this is. I liked it because well, it's a hat slash cowl pattern essentially and the hat itself is in waves and it was the one if anyone remembers where i had to contact the designer because i couldn't actually get the waves to stack on top of each other according to the pattern and i thought i was going crazy but then when i messaged her after <laughs> having to draw out pictures to try to explain what i meant she, she realized uh-huh. that the pattern was wrong and was missing some slip stitches. Well, I got to the second repeat of the the wavy pattern. I was finished with it, and when I and I looked at it, it's like, hmm, this reminds me of something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, it reminds me of when you were talking about it not stacking up properly. So I immediately texted you, and you're like, oh, <laughs> this is what she said. So. Um, I had it ripped back. But I do have to say that when I was working on the ribbing, I hated it. I hated every second of working on the ribbing. <laughs> it's, because? Uh, because it's like, I don't know, it mimics knitting. So maybe uh-huh. I just don't like crocheting that mimics knitting. Uh-huh. Well, I think it's more that it mimics knitting and you're like, I could do this faster. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and it was... I just, I mean, I I ripped it out so many times. In fact, I started with a different yarn, didn't I? When I started this out? I don't know. I'm trying to remember now. Yes, I started out with a different yarn and it was too splitty. So I was like, no, this is not going to work. And so I, and then I I picked up this yarn, which is a Madeline Tosh twist DK. So it's a really nice yarn. And it was a lot better. you're wasting on a crochet project. (laughs) But it was a lot better, except like I was trying, I was working on keeping my tension or yeah, keeping my tension at least consistent. Yeah. And so I I would crochet, 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 and it would be like about maybe five inches. Uh-huh. What is this? Four inches. And I, I was like, oh, I hate it. And I rip it up, rip it back. And I did that <laughs> like three or four times before I was finally satisfied. So then I kept, kept going after like the fourth time. Of ripping back because I was just so, and even still it's not to my satisfaction. It's still a little wonky, but I'm thinking it's maybe, okay. It's your first crochet project in a while. Yeah, and I've never <laughs> I've never done this. What is this stitch called? With when you're stitching it in into the, back, the in the back loop, into the back loop and mm-hmm. all that stuff. So um, I've never I've never done anything any crochet that's this tight. I guess I should say that's that uh-huh. not that's not airy. That's not, uh, doesn't have right. does, doesn't have the more solid yeah the distinguishing laziness. crochet laciness yes right yeah so once I finished the the ribbing uh-huh. and I started the wavy pattern I was liking it so much more yeah it looks really nice and I like the color that sort of blue yeah it looks it looks more green in person than on the screen on the screen it looks oh, okay. more blue uh-huh. uh so yeah actually the first row of the waves. I still wasn't liking it too much mm-hmm. <laughs> because it was tight getting it yeah. in. Uh-huh. Then after this, after the the second repeat that I ripped out, I was I was a lot happier. So uh-huh. yeah, so I'm on my one, two, three, fourth repeat. Very good. You just keep going until 
big enough, I guess, huh? Yeah, until, I mean, the pattern, I think, says, like, you go a certain X amount. Inches. And then, uh, no, of repeats. Repeats. Uh-huh. Like, it has a different number for each size. So there's the baby oh, okay. size, the child size, and the adult right. size. Uh-huh. And so I'll, conti- I'll, I'll go up to whatever they say and see if it's. Uh-huh. So the, the right one size. that you made is the, when you wear it as a cowl, is this uh-huh. is the, the ribbing part constrictive uh, around uh, your no, neck? No, it's not. No. Is that, does that, does that feel constrictive? Um, no, but I mean, it's definitely tighter than I would w- normally, normally wear a cowl, wear a cowl. I guess. Mm-hmm. Cause I my... mean, I guess with mine, I have the problem of it not being quite tight enough because of the yarn I used. Mm-hmm. Well, this is definitely, it'll be tight enough for a head. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, I, for a I do give you permission to, well, cause I can't remember this pattern recommends for doing the the cord to actually lace through the hat and then that's the thing that you like the drawstring mm-hmm. basically mm-hmm. but i know i ended up doing a crocheted eye cord yeah i did a crocheted eye cord uh-huh. and it was very laborious so i give you permission if you do do an eye cord to do to the knit. regular one yeah because well, yeah i remember I, you're talking about doing the crochet eye cord like i didn't know you can crochet an eye cord and when you're explaining it to me i was like that sounds like knitting an eye cord with a crochet. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. What does it say for blah, blah, blah. Just, it just says to make a chain. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'll do a chain because it's, it, it'll look too loose. Thin. Yeah. Unless I go down like several needle sizes. And of uh-huh. course, and then I, I would be complaining about it being too tight because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do when it comes to crocheting. I complain. Right. Well, next time it'll be enough, all right? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <I think so. laughs> sure. Uh, well, if we're not going to have another episode this month, yeah, it'll so be have probably, extra time. Yeah, I'll probably be <laughs> well, next time. <laughs> so, I guess the first fo I will talk about is also my raw. Oh, wait, craft. You don't have a whip? Sorry, whip. I meant whip. I meant whip. Okay. Because it, it, it is whip. My uh-huh. knitting project, which Ooh. is my hat. And I'm really, really close to being done. I probably could have finished it for this episode, but I just didn't quite make it. So this is the Pussy Hat Project hat. And I'm just doing it as described on the pattern, which is to knit a rectangle and then sew it together to create the ears. When it folds down, I had finished I'd almost finished at one point. I'd gotten the last bit of ribbing. But then my my um, stitches, had I'd really loosened up. So, like, I think just getting more used to knitting. Mm-hmm. So my rib at the beginning was a lot tighter than my rib at the end. And it was making me really angry. <laughs> so I undid it. Uh-huh. And have redone, or I'm almost done redoing that last bit of rib at a tighter gauge or whatever are you are you just it, making it tighter or are you using a smaller uh, no i'm needle? just making it tighter oh okay just to match the other end it's you know i i can i can see why i made mistakes where i've you know there's a couple places where i'm like oh i purled when i was supposed to knit but uh-huh. it doesn't bother me that much you can wear that on the back of the head well i think it's on both sides oh. <laughs> <laughs> wait even on the the second rib yeah on the second rib i'm like uh Curled there, but it's, I just don't think I care enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, good enough. <laughs> um, it's funny. My um, my boss, he was at lunch today. I was working on this, uh-huh. and he was just asking me, oh, oh, he was asking me about crocheting, like what I make it for, like uh-huh. if I just make everything for myself, if I make it for other people. But so he was asking, like asking that about my crocheting and i was just saying like oh well this is ac- this actually is knitting and he's just like oh i wasn't sure and then i was afraid that if i said it was knitting that you'd be like oh it's crocheting no difference. <laughs> <laughs> because normally i am crocheting <laughs> uh yeah so uh. that is one whip and it'll definitely be a fo next time my other whip is a big one, but is driving me absolutely up the wall. So it is the Temperamental Artist 
Shawl by Kat Golden. And it's part of the Crochet Project's Shawl Project Book 3, which I'd bought at EYF in 2017. Mm-hmm. So, so far, I've also made the Wisteria Trellis Shawl from that book as well. Mm-hmm. But I I bought the book because I wanted to make this one. And it's, it's a... I guess, it, is it a triangle shawl or more like a crescent D? It's not a very deep triangle, mm, but I it's... Think maybe it's, it would be more a crescent shape. Let's okay. see. Oh, um, Ravelry says it's a crescent shape. Okay. So yeah, so it's a crescent shape. And it's basically done with easy, uh, Tunisian crochet. Uh-huh. And then there's like shells. It's got like a mm-hmm. shell motif. I love the shells. The shells are beautiful. Yeah, and so the whole thing with the shawl project book three was that they were all the shawls use gradient sets. Mm-hmm. So I bought a gradient set from Isolde's stand at EYF this year, mm-hmm. and it's Julie Asselin, which mm-hmm. is it's a Canadian company, Lazu fingering gradient set in Goodnight Moon, and it starts the light color is a sort of they're all like, um, it's very, it's not speckled. It's, how you, how would you describe that? Uh, I don't know. I can't see because. You, well, you were there you when I bought it. <laughs> um, I don't remember. It's um, tonal. Uh, variegated? Because it's like mostly what's like the a name sort of gray purple. What's the purple. name of the, the colorway? Uh, Good Night Moon. It's, it, yeah. It's sort of the darker colors end is like a gray, a dark gray purple. And then, especially as you work your way up to the lighter colors, you can see more flashes of, like, a blue and a lighter purple. I mean, the, isn't the, wasn't the light color kind of speckled? The light, the lighter color is definitely a little more speckled. Uh-huh. But that, but the lightest color I have was, is not part of the gradient set. Oh. So it's a gradient set plus a hundred gram skein. I see. So I bought the gradient set. Uh, EYF. And then I had to buy the 100 gram skein to go with it. Um, and I wanted to get the 100 gram skein to go on the dark end. Mm-hmm. So that the same brand had a color that would sort of work. But no one has it in stock in mm-hmm. the world. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, so I don't yeah. know if you... It, it's um, Ardois. There are, all the names are in French pretty much. So I, I, I don't know. Uh, so I realized... There was no way I was going to get the darker end color. And I tried looking at, like, other yarns to see if I could just find something that would go. And I didn't really like anything. So I ended up actually emailing um, Isolde's shop for advice. And mm-hmm. someone kindly emailed me back with pictures of the grade, the same gradient set that I have with different skeins next to it. Mm-hmm. Including, I was most interested in the folk colorway, which pretty much looks like it's meant to go on the light end of the set that I have. Uh, but they also sent me pictures of the gradient set with a couple other colors, but they were more, they were definitely more tonal, like more like just gray, or just a light bluey, mm-hmm. whereas this one's got the different colors in it. So I did end up going with that. It's a 90% super wash merino, 10% silk. And just feeling it, it doesn't feel particularly soft. Like, I wouldn't have guessed it has anything other than the merino in it. And it doesn't even feel as soft as some other superwash merino that I've felt. Mm-hmm. But once I've worked it up, it definitely feels a bit nicer. Yeah, I mean, it, it the yarn definitely will handle differently after it's been made into mm-hmm. knit up or crocheted up versus and, in the skein. Uh-huh. And definitely all as well, the fact that it's being worked up with Tunisian stitches, I think, changes up the way the color is working out. Mm-hmm. And so I've got my swatch, and I'm, I am kind of, when I'm done, want to do a swatch of, like, single crochets or double crochets or something, just to compare how the color, if the color pools or anything, with normal crochet stitches. Hmm. Anyway. Drama. <laughs> no. Is the exact word that Sam used. He said, he, oh, really? I, was, I was stressing out about this stupid project and he was just like why does everything have to be a drama why can't you just crochet something <laughs> it's <almost> drama <laughs> and it is it's, it's drama and essentially i did my gauge swatch like a good girl and 
you're meant to get 12 stitches to 10 centimeters, but I had 16 stitches. So I had too many stitches, which means you would think that my shawl would turn out smaller than what the, per the pattern says you're going to get. Yeah? That makes sense. Wait, you have... So you're supposed to have yeah, 12 yeah, yeah. stitches, it would, it would but I got smaller, 16. Yeah. yeah, so it should be smaller. But <laughs> now I've made it, and it's absolutely ginormous. <laughs> it's way longer than what it says that the finished project is going to be. Plus, uh -huh. I did the math of the stitch count and the gauge, and I don't uh -huh. really understand how you're supposed to... Like, if you just take the stitch count and multiply it by how many stitches you start with, you can uh -huh. chain with at the beginning, uh -huh. the, the, the finished product that they say is too small. Oh, maybe so at they some got point, the math wrong. Either they got the math wrong or the subsequent shells somehow like scrunch it in a bit. Since I can't see you, are you crocheting the outside of the crescent first or the inside of the crescent first? Or is it like the long does side? It grow from the... You do the whole long side and then you decrease by two shells until okay. you get all the way to the point. So are they maybe measuring it not like along the arc but from tip to tip because if there's like an arc right tip to sort tip. of uh, there i don't really think there will be much of an arc though oh okay i don't know i don't know what to tell you then i don't know either but i uh, when i did the first row of shells i realized it was massive but I was, uh, you know it's probably fine like something along the way will something something my gauge was you know smaller than what it recommended so it'll be fine i'll have enough yarn well turns out i don't have enough yarn <laughs> oh no <laughs> so the first row is like 11 shells and the next row is 10 shells and then the row after that i still need to eke out nine more shells or something with the uh -huh. same 100 gram skein plus like some more at the like one more shell at the end or something and i oh. so i weighed what i have and then what i had left and i just i don't have enough so i'm gonna have to rip it all back out and oh. go down a hook size <laughs> So, well, what hook size are you using now? How many? I'm using what they recommended, which is six and a half millimeters. Six and a half millimeters. Uh huh. It's pretty That's big. Pretty hook. fat, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty fat, and so you know, it's it's creating a pretty like lacy, not lacy. Like it's still pretty solid because it's the, of the Tunisian stitch, but it's it's definitely loose. It feels looser than what I would normally work at. Mm hmm. Because I, where I mean, my my, my Crochet has gotten looser since, like, compared to when I first first started. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm still a relatively tight crocheter. But even when I went to my gauge swatch at the recommended hook size, it was too small. What other have you looked at? What other people are using? No. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But I mean, just the, I mean, you know, if I if I had done my gauge swatch and and seen that I and I had too many stitches, I should have gone up a hook size. And then I definitely wouldn't have had enough yarn. Yeah. So that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. It's all a drama. <laughs> Basically. Just go down. I would go down a couple. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to go down to a five. Uh-huh. Um, and then... Um... Par partially because I have a five. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't have a handle because because it's Tunisian it can't have a like a uh, fat handle a grip. Uh, oh yeah yeah. Oh that's a, that's another thing I want to say about the 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 crocheting. My hand hurts. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was doing the ribbing, um, yeah. I found that I was, I guess my my shoulders were shrugging a little bit as I was doing the ribbing, so uh -huh. I had to like keep reminding my, myself to relax my shoulders because then because then I would get like a neck ache and then my shoulders or my neck would hurt from doing all that so yeah because I guess I wasn't relaxed <laughs> enough. Uh -huh. and yeah so anyway my hand hurts I was I'm, I was always almost thinking about making one of those grips out of um, female clay or something but uh -huh. I haven't got around <laughs> to doing it yet mm. okay sorry that's all right did you want to talk about your FO? I have a fabulous <laughs> FO. <laughs> uh, so my FO, I finished my Engi. I'm so happy with it. Finally. Yay. I should have counted how many episodes you've been talking about it. <laughs> it's been a few. 
it's a bit of you. But I think in the big picture, I haven't been working on it that long, have I? No, it is a fingering weight. No, it's sweater. not quite fingering weight. It's, oh, it's, it's like a, it's a sport weight. Okay. <laughs> so it fits, but I still have to weave in the end. So it's not like finish, 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 finish. Uh huh. Just finish, finish, Just finish. Just finished. <laughs> <laughs> I've blocked it. It looks really good on the mannequin right now. Mm-hmm. But it, after I blocked it, it stretched out a bit, so it was longer than it than it was than I in, intended initially it intended it to be. Mm-hmm. So, but it's super wash. So maybe if I like threw it in the dryer, like when it's practically dry, just for like uh-huh. ten minutes, maybe it will go <laughs> it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I haven't done it because I'm afraid. Uh-huh. So I It looks very, yeah. very nice. I'm very happy with it. So, remind, remind, so I know the pink is the Martin's Lab. Yep. What's the light purple? Actually, that's light blue. The light blue is the oh, Swan's blue. Island. Mm-hmm. Is that a blacker yarn? Uh, no. Yes? No. no. I don't think so. <laughs> um, I have to look at my rivalry. And the purple is a is Baja Abs Aspen. It's a uh, it's got a little bit of silk in it. Uh huh. And the light color is Quince and Co. Chickadee in the natural. Nice. Let's see. Swans. Are, no, it's uh, no, no. This is that the that yarn that's made in Maine. All right. Yeah. Very nice. So, yep, I'm happy, and I'm already, like, thinking about what what's the next sweater I'm going to work on. <laughs> I have, like, two in, in my queue, like, in my head mm-hmm. that I want to make for myself. But before I start making them, I think I'm going to make some little sweaters for little people. Like children. Yes, for children. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of my cousins had babies this year. Uh-huh. And so I was thinking of making them sweaters because I haven't made them anything yet. And then one of the babies has an older sister who's three, so she deserves a sweater too. So I'm going to knit them. It's not it's not for Christmas or anything. It's just for, for the hell of it because uh-huh. they're babies and they're cute. Nice. Well, congratulations. So do you have any FOs? Uh, I do. I have a hat. Well, similar to the one that you made, it's a hat slash cowl, and it's a pattern by Hannah of the Crozy, Cozy Cottage Crochet. It's a paper pattern, but it's pretty, it's very simple, but I liked the texture of it. I don't know if you can see I it. like the pom-pom. Yeah, so her, her, her pattern calls for pom-poms at the end of the uh, <laughs> drawstrings for the uh-huh. top of the hat. Um, so yeah, it's it's just a simple pattern. Um, the it's done in the round, and the nature of the stitch it's it's very textured on the outside, but on the inside it it's a bit more like flat. Um, and so she mm-hmm. says it's reversible, so I guess you could wear it like with the texture side out or the flat side out. And it's in a yarn that you got me. Because you were doing a knit picks order, asked so if I wanted oh. anything. Uh. <laughs> oh, so that came. That was in the last order that I just made. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this didn't take me very long at all. It's the City Tweed DK yarn in Enchanted, which is like a foresty green sort of color. Fifty-five percent merino, twenty-five percent alpaca, twenty percent Donegal tweed. I don't know what that means. It's nice. Is that for yourself? No. So this is for my soon-to-be sister-in-law. It's Sam's brother's fiance. I had to. I stalked her Instagram or her Facebook a little bit to figure out what color to get her. Uh And she she seems to wear a lot of green. So Mm. green hat. Is there Uh, a date? A what? Date. Have they set a date? Oh, for for the wedding? No. Oh, okay. Um, For Christmas. And because, you know, there must be drama always. <laughs> As I was making it, I was like, getting towards the end and I put it on my head. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> maybe it's too tight. Like, how big is her head? I don't know. <laughs> like, I was like, maybe, but is it even a little too tight on me? And I, I couldn't decide. And But once once it was all, like, done, I think it's Did okay. Did you block it? Did I didn't block, block it? it. Just because it just seemed so straight already. 
It might, it might loosen up if you block yeah, it. Yeah, but, but now I've decided maybe it's fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I think it is, it is a little tight to use as a cowl. Uh-huh. Not like too tight, but just maybe not the most comfortable cowl in the world. So <laughs> slightly better as a hat. <laughs> so that's one <laughs> FO. And my other FO is also a gift. Actually, I think I have two of them because I don't think it talks about either of them as FOs, but they're the wall hangings that I'm making yeah, for right. Christmas uh-huh. um, for an undisclosed person who's probably not listening to this episode, so it's fine. You've already <laughs> talked about this. Yeah, I know, but I gave for... a warning. <laughs> <laughs> so she was supposed to... But anyways, so this is the wall hanging for uh, my sister-in-law and... Uh-huh. Yeah, it's done. It's, it looks cool. It's on the pole. Dowel. I definitely, so, you know, I was saying that I wasn't really enjoying the whole freeform thing. So <laughs> the edges are not as straight as I would like. And I even went, there was one bit where it just came in way too much. So I went, I like, I essentially darned it. But like, just to, <laughs> well, I it. like, I did a, I made a chain and I chained from, uh-huh one bit to the next bit uh, and then uh-huh. I darned it in uh-huh. that empty space oh, just, to, <laughs> just to fill in the gap so it's a little better <laughs> but I, I really like the way it looks it's got some nice texture yeah it looks and cute. then I also finished the one that I made for Emily and that one's hanging in your closet at the moment because you know, yeah because I have yeah. to roll it up and I still have to get um, a tube to nail it in I ended up buying yarn it's um uh wool and nettle or it's viscose derived from nettle um, oh just because mm-hmm. it was nifty yeah so th- those i finished a little while ago and i think i think that's it for my apples yeah you've been busy again i have been and now that we've done this episode i can rip out my Oh, it's a remote artist, artist <laughs> shawl and start over again. <laughs> Did you take pictures? It's so annoying. I haven't yet. I have. You know what's difficult? Trying to find light to take picture. I wake up in the morning and it's dark. And then I go to work. And then I come home and it's dark. When am I going to take a picture? <laughs> well, it is winter. It's like that here too. Not as bad, I, mean, I know, but, you know, but still. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I woke up in the morning and it was nighttime. <laughs> like... <laughs> There was not even a glimmer of the sun <laughs> coming up. Like, it was properly uh... night. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think we have we both have things for a few of our favorite things. Uh-huh. Mine was just, I was thinking about gifting and stuff. And I have a uh-huh. recommendation for anybody. And this works both in the U.S. Uh-huh. and the U.K. So, you know how, you, you know, you can make photo books and stuff with whatever, uh, but what's the butterfly Shutterfly one? Fish and one. snapfish. <laughs> and a shutterfly, yeah. <laughs> you know, the butterfly fish sites. Yeah, you can make photo books on uh-huh. those sites. But I would recommend a website called Blurb. And the reason why is because I feel like, especially for something that's not a photo book, is <laughs> I'm not explaining this very well. If you want to make like some a coffee sort of table book, book or Ta- co- a coffee table book, they're good for that. Yeah, yeah, they're good for like. So basically, I I have used it for like a photo book sort of thing. I I made a book for my uncles mm-hmm. when they got married. Um, they they're absolute globe trotters, and they're very good about sending us postcards. And so we would accumulated these postcards, you know, like over a decade's worth of postcards from all over the world. Um, so I scanned all of them in to my computer and turned it into a book. And so I used Blurb to print that. But I think the funnier thing that I've used it for is I have this book on our shelves and I'd made it for Sam for mm-hmm. his birthday. And it's got a record of all of our text messages from the first four months. But you look at it and it just looks like a, a book that you uh-huh. could have bought from the shop. Like like a you know like a trade hardcover book, um, like uh-huh. the pages are the same and the printing quality is the same and like you know it's got like the yeah. the dust jacket and everything and yeah if you're so inclined to go like actually go through the effort of designing like all the stuff that goes inside the book 
I think it's it's really good because blurb uh, people use it as a way to self publish mm-hmm. books as well. So you know, if you actually wrote a novel and wanted to publish like a soft cover version, you could order five hundred for you know cheaper. But you can also mm-hmm. order just one at like not that expensive, like not as expensive as, it, as you would think it would be. And I may or may not have used it mm. for Christmas. And I saw you somebody. working on it while you were home. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you're such a book nerd. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, I'm a bar- book nerd, which is why I like it, but I don't know. I I just, yeah. That's my recommendation. Uh, okay. That's my favorite thing. Well, my favorite thing is children with driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't know where you were going to go with that. Children with... <laughs> the... For some reason, my, my mind went really, no. like, morbid. Children with no, no, cancer. that would why would that be my favorite? Thing? <laughs> I don't know. That's terrible. No, my <laughs> my youngest child has finally gotten her license, and I did not push her to get her license, and she just kept dragging her feet like all summer long. She didn't really want to practice driving or anything. I like whatever, and but I finally signed her up for driver's ed in September, and it's two months long, so they have classroom like X hours of classrooms time and then 10 hours of practice driving time with the instructor and towards the end of it she was just Mm -hmm. itching to get her license because towards the end of it her swim season started so you know I had to pick her up from school or pick her up from swim and anyway so there was a lot of driving around and I think she was just like oh this is so much easier if I had my license and and so she just just (laughs) like Bit, not bit the bullet. She just, you know, girded her, her loins and just went through all the practicing and, you know, drove on the highway. And then we made her uh, appointment and she got her license. So she's had her license for just over a week now. It's I'm a nervous wreck, but at least I don't have to change in the morning. I can just like wave her, wave goodbye to her in my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes I don't change out of my pajamas until after lunch. You know, it's it's. It's a lot less running around for me, so I can actually get some more work done at home without <laughs> having to, you know, drop everything and go pick her up and stuff. So I do miss the time we spend in the car together. <laughs> uh-huh. But she has actually been driving herself. She's been driving herself to school and to practice and to, like, a school function. She's driven herself. It's funny. The, the day after she got her license, she had that school function, and she asked me, can I drive myself? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you have your license. You can drive yourself. <laughs> and she was very, she was uh, very good about, uh, she texted me as soon as she got to school. I mean, it takes 10 minutes to get to school. It's like three miles away. And then when she was done with her thing, she texted me and said, in the car now. <laughs> <laughs> and she did the same thing the next morning when she drove herself to school because she uh-huh. got the, we have to pay for a parking permit. Uh the parking lot in the school so that was pretty funny it's a bit weird she's driving she's driving yeah your baby sister is driving the whole world is opening up i'm not even driving (laughs) (laughs) you're definitely the oldest oh no you weren't never mind (laughs) you were not the oldest one to get your license Uh, so yeah, life life has uh, been a little different with everybody having their driver's license in this house yeah. now. You're on your way to yeah. having all adult children. <sighs> yeah, one more year and she's an official adult. Yeah, crazy. It is crazy. Okay, enough <laughs> of that. Right. Um, do you have anything for shop talk? No, I've we had a really extended shop talk last time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I've made a few more Christmas bags, and th- these will be the last Christmas bags I make because, as we approach, because nobody wants a Christmas knitting bag at Christmas. You want it before Christmas to put your Christmas projects in. Yes, right. But I, they're they're going to be in the shop by tomorrow. I just have to pick some, take some pictures, and that's it, really. Well, if there's nothing else, nope. Okie dokie. In that case, 
I just would like to let everyone listening know that you can find our show notes for this episode and every episode on our website, which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com. You should definitely follow us on Instagram at kcacypodcast, or you can follow my personal Instagram, which is Allison here. That's Allison with a Y and one L. Or you can follow my mom's personal Instagram at upstate underscore viv. And then make sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen, whether that's iTunes or YouTube or any other podcast listening apps. Um, and you, if you're on Ravelry, you can find our group just or our um, Ravelry group if you search for Keep Calm and Carry Yarn podcast. So thank you for listening. And remember to keep calm and carry yarn.